Eyewitness News presents Newsmakers with your hosts, Jane Ann Bugda and Andy Mahalshek. Hello and welcome to Newsmakers. I'm Jane Ann Bugda. And I'm Andy Mahalshek. The numbers of the homeless population continue to rise all across our region. And no doubt about it, COVID-19 is playing a role in that spike. The Keystone Mission and Roots Place continue to be beacons of hope, offering shelter, meals, and a second chance at rebuilding lives. Today, we'll introduce you to our guest, and our conversation will begin when this edition of Newsmakers returns right after this. Welcome back to Newsmakers. I'm Jane Ann Bugda along with Andy Mahalshik, and we're continuing our conversation today about the different way that COVID-19 continues to impact our lives. And, you know, one section of our um, of our area region is homelessness. And that's that's a kind of a, a subject we don't really hear a lot about because there's people out there without a home and but there's people out there fighting the good fight for them. And when you think about how COVID-19 has impacted Jane all of our lives in so many ways that we didn't even think imaginable back in, in February and March, imagine those and, and folks who have who are homeless or unemployed have nowhere to go how do they deal with COVID-19 I mean you know we, we, many families are facing challenges in, in whatever, whatever you call it the normal situation with a home and a place of work and that kind of thing but how do, do these folks make it so that's why we've invited on two champions for the homeless from our area Justin Behrens who is the CEO and executive director of the Keystone Mission and Crystal Kotlowski, who is the co-director of the Wilkes-Barre Programming for Volunteers of America, Pennsylvania, and she handles the operation at Ruth's Place. And we want to thank you both for being with us today um, and talk a little bit about your day-to-day -day, um, operations and what you're experiencing out there in a whole different world uh, as for both of you as well in, in what both you do and uh, working with the homeless. Um, so I think I'll start with a little history lesson. Let's begin with, tell us a little bit about the Keystone Mission and a little bit about Ruth's Place. Justin, if you want to go first. Sure, yeah. Um, Keystone Mission was founded in 2005. Um, it was a pastor that came from California who was handing out food in the back of his truck to the homeless here in Northeastern Pennsylvania. It later morphed into actually handing out hot meals um, on Fridays, Saturdays, and uh, Sundays um, and also Mondays to the homeless. And then it kept morphing into uh, handing out clothing and handing out um, those necessities that the homeless need just to get by when they have nothing else, um, the, you know, the basic needs. And now brings us more to right now where we are, where um, we have this agape team that goes out in the community, their mobile trucks that goes out into the, um, into the wilderness or into the tents uh, where they're hosting, into the streets and really meets the homeless in their element. And we hear their stories. Um, we, we wanna hear what's going on in their life, hear what's the, what's the issues that they're facing, and then connect them to the resources in the community. Um, we have great resources here in Luzerne and Lackawanna County, and that's what we want Team Agape to do is connect those resources, like um, my counterpart over here, Crystal, uh, Ruth's Place, with the women's shelter. And I'll let Crystal then talk about uh, Ruth's Place. Thank you. Um, Ruth's Place started in a similar grassroots fashion um, in 2003 in downtown Wilkes-Barre when, you know, the pastor and his wife at the Keep the United Methodist Church noticed women were sleeping on the steps. At the time, there was only a men's shelter. Um, so they saw the need. They were kind enough to open up their church to take women in. Um, it was all volunteer-led. Um, and it just evolved over time to become, you know, what it is today, a more structured facility. In 2009, Roos Place was able to secure a permanent location. Um, and with that, it just gave us everything that we needed to be able to go, you know, 24 seven year round available to women in need. And Justin and Crystal, you know, we talk about the homeless and I still think, you know, when we, when we do stories and eyewitness news about the homeless or uh, the folks who need Ruth's Place services or Volunteer of America help out, it still surprises many people. They say, well, what is that culture? Where is that society? I don't see them. But you see these folks on a daily basis. Talk about the numbers of people you're seeing in need out there, but also now complicated by the fact of COVID-19. I mean, people say that they don't see them, but it's because they look like you and me. There's nothing to see. Um, nothing's going to make them stand out to you. Um, you. You know, anyone that you know could be experiencing this at any point in time. And you, unless you asked, you wouldn't know. 
Um, of course, with the onset of COVID-19 and the increase in unemployment, job shutdowns and all that, there are a lot of people in our community in need reaching out, you know, for shelter, food, resources, um, you know, and it, it just complicates things for every program and every provider changes the way that you deal with things because, you know, in programs like this, we're used to, you know, face to face, hugging, sharing, you know, all that stuff just comes naturally. Um, and so to change your entire approach, um, it's, you know, a challenge. I agree completely with Crystal. Um, homelessness doesn't discriminate. Um, it could be anybody. It doesn't matter what gender you are. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter. Even your social economic background, it doesn't matter. Um, you could be a wealthy individual one day and wake up the next day and end up being homeless and not having a place. Um, we're finding here in Keystone Mission that it's really the lack of relationships that makes someone homeless. Um, it's really the relationship poor. They have no one to reach out to. Um, I think of myself, if I was homeless, or if I lost everything tomorrow, I can reach out to my family, my friends, my church, everywhere for help. These individuals come through our doors with not a single person to call that they can reach out to. Um, to ask about the question about the numbers, we're serving right now about 116 individuals. And these are individuals that don't have a roof over their head. These are individuals that are living in tents out there in the community. They don't come out to the community because there's a lot of um, their boundaries. They're setting up those boundaries. They do, they're not comfortable going out there talking to individuals. And, and they utilize the services like restaurants and grocery stores and the fast food places to go use the, you know, their sinks to wash and that stuff. And now with COVID being, you know, shutting these places down, they're limited in where they can go. And so now their resources have really, if you think about it, with COVID, it, it, go, it trickles down. And now they're hitting at the rock bottom where they have nowhere to go and, and they're suffering even harder than they uh, suffered before. You know, it, you mentioned COVID-19 and it has changed the way you operate. Um, tell us a little bit about how it has changed your operation and taking in people. And how do people find out about each of your organizations, each of your agencies? I can start off real quick. Um, so the first thing that we do is we, the the homeless population is an amazing uh, group of people. They communicate among each other. Um, you know, if we want to, they know where Keystone Mission is. They know we show up. They see our vehicles. They come over to us. Um, but we're just like Crystal said in the very beginning is, you know, this is a very intimate, you know, a bond a relationship that you're trying to communicate with the individuals. You know, the hugging, the crying, you know, going through their story and walking their path. And we can't do that anymore now. We have to, you know, practice the COVID guidelines by CDC and the health uh, Department of Health. And so now we have the masks and, and we have to say the distance between each other. Um, so we, we break that, that bond down and we're trying to build relationships in the same time so that they're not homeless. So for us here at Keystone Mission, we still show that compassion. We still show that love. We still show that grace. Um, everything that was taught to us that, that we want to follow, we try to show back to them. Um, and, and they know to come to us. They know that we're here to help them and move them in the direction and connect them to resources. And so we're an advocate for Ruth's place and saying, you know, if a woman, come, a woman comes up to us and says, hey, I need a place to stay, the first person we're going to call is Crystal and, and her department to get them connected. And so that's the whole mission is that we need to put down our silos and put down our little corners that we work in and work together as a team to make this accomplish and say community together to end the homelessness. Work together as a community. Crystal, if you can, uh, explain Ruth's Place. Most of us who are familiar with it understand it, but to the wider audience out there, 20 some counties we cover, and plus on, on digital, what, what, how do people find out about Ruth's Place and the, the women who come there, how, how do they end up at Ruth's Place to begin with? I mean, how are they homeless? How, how does that happen? You know, I mean, just it seems like it boggles your mind in 2020. It does. It does. Homelessness is still an issue that we have to face. Um, and I would agree with Justin that I've always said that the homeless population is their own greatest resource. They always know the latest on what's available and who's popping up and they they always know who to tell you to go to. So, you know, word of mouth. Um, so we're big on social media. We try to push what we're doing to, you know, raise awareness in the community about the special things that Ruth's Place is doing. Um, we're a very unique place. Um, we create a very much a family culture um, and, you know, people 
move on from Ruth's place and say that, you know, this was a place of hope when they were at their lowest. Um, and we stay committed on that journey with them. Um, just to speak to how COVID-19 has affected our operations, it's been significant. You know, Ruth's place, for those who aren't familiar, is one large room with 21 beds. It is a standard, you know, commingling type of shelter. So when COVID happened and social distancing became a factor and, you know, all these different things, a communal living space is like, you know, a pretty bad place to be. We had to get really creative. Um, Ruth's Place established an isolation space so that women who are coming into the facility are able to quarantine prior to, so we can make sure that they're healthy and that everything is good, and then they can move in. So, you know, but we've been committed all throughout the pandemic to our work. Our staff is dedicated. They are essential workers and they really are heroes, you know, and they deserve all the credit in the world for what they've done to, be, to make sure that the women in our community are served. Um, and, and question of how do women become homeless? Um, women become homeless just the same as men. Um, anyone can become homeless from any situation. Um, you know, tragedies happen, one day your life changes and you need help. You know, a lot of people um, have a belief that a lot of women's homelessness is caused by domestic violence. Um, and that is true, but it is not the majority. You know, job loss, lack of a family support system, um, all these things, all these factors lead them to homelessness, but that does not define them and it's not a hopeless situation. We help them get out of it. You know, and Justin, you know, one of the things that you did recently to bring some light to the plight of the homeless is that you opened up a 24 hour conversation um, in Scranton. So tell us a little bit about that and some of the questions that were asked to you that, that may have surprised you. So if we're gonna end homelessness, um, we need to start opening the dialogue and really need to start talking about homelessness in general. And so that's why I decided 24 hours, I would sit there on Facebook Live and I would just call out anybody to come and speak to me. Um, it was amazing. I, I mean, I had everyone from people that were running for office for Congress to uh, state representatives, uh, State Representative Gerald Mullery came and spoke to me. Um, the uh, county manager, uh, Dave Pedry spoke to me. Leanne McDermott from the count, uh, county council spoke to me. And what was interesting enough is, is they all recognize that homelessness is an issue, right? I, I think that the, the issues that came out there, the questions they asked was more of what do we do to fix this? How can we make this a better place for everybody? And we troubleshooted, we talked about ideas. Um, you know, I, I work in, in Scranton right now on a code blue. And I said, well, why can't we do that in Luzerne County, a code blue? Um, you know, and these so were the things that started talking. and whether we have an answer or we have a discussion of of the answers to it, but we brought light to the whole topic. We talked about it. We talked about what a homeless person was. I had people on there that lived in the shelter when I quarantined myself during COVID at the Weston Field House. I stayed there and lived for two months with them in the shelter um, that we made up there at the Weston Field House. And one of the guys that was there that is now successful living in an apartment, moving on with his life, talked about his life and what his experience was as a homeless person and what change and hope like Ruth's place gives the people that he experienced. And that was probably the most emotional piece for me is seeing a success story of an individual that came to me broken and left living in an apartment and had a smile on his face from ear to ear, knowing that he's going to be successful. And I think that's what really showed that these individuals are humans, just like you and I, they're individuals that just had a wrong end of life or something just happened in their life. And they just are trying to move forward. And they're looking for places like Ruth's Place for hope. They're looking for Keystone Mission for hope and a place just to get out of that rut. And Crystal and, and Justin, you both, you know, you use the word hope. Again, I can't even imagine being in that situation, but you said you, know, you never say never. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with, they've got to be on an emotional rock bottom when they walk into your place or they reach out to you on social media to take that step knowing where they've come from well, you know, whatever normal means these days, but mm. how do you deal with their psychological and emotional issues? They've got to come in there. When I say issues, come in there. Again, they're at rock bottom. How do you pick them up? 
um, you know, at Ruth's place, we just immediately swoop in, you know, provide whatever needs to be provided and immediately start trying to build that trust. We do, you know, client led case management where they let us know what is what they think is best for them. And we figure out a way to make that happen for them. Um, we also make sure that all our staff is very intensely trained on trauma informed care, that they use delicate approaches, that we discuss every situation on a case by case basis and figure out what level of care does this person need and what are we going to do and how are we going to get them through it. You know, it's all tailored to the individual and that's what's most important. One size fits all does not, not work when it comes to homeless services. And, you know, like Justin said, having conversations about what is best practices and what, what, what could we do better? That's what needs to happen. And I think, a whole heart oh, go, I'm sorry, go ahead, Justin. No, I was gonna say, I agree with Crystal 100%. I, I think it's hearing their stories. Right. A lot of times they come into a doctor's office or they come into their mental health department or they come in there and, and they feel like they're being judged automatically just because they're homeless. And, and, and I think places like Ruth Place and Keystone Mission and, and many other places out there, when they hear their stories, when we show that, you know, we're not just here to go through the motions. We want to hear their life and hear what they're going through. And then we want to walk that path with them. And we want to help guide them and get them in the direction that they need to go and, and, and client driven. I love like when Crystal brought that up, it's client driven. We can't tell them how to live their life. We need to let them make that decision and move forward with that and let them walk their path and finish those chapters in their life with us. And hopefully those chapters will be amazing stories that will last forever and, and you know, have a great fairy tale ending. And that's what we're all about is just really hearing their stories and walking their path with them. Well, we are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we are going to continue our conversation. Uh, we have the uh, websites for uh, Keystone Mission and Ruth's Place linked up to our website at pahomepage.com. There you'll find more information, including their wish list, and they do need volunteers, which we'll be getting into. And you are watching Newsmakers. We are a proud recipient of three Pennsylvania Association of Broadcasting Awards for Excellence in Public Affairs Programming, and we'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Newsmakers, Jane Ann Bugs, along with Andy Mahalshik and our guests today are Justin Behrens from Keystone Mission and Crystal Kotlowski from Ruth's Place. And what we're talking about is how they help those who are in need, those who are homeless, not only with meals and um, shelter, but also helping them rebuild their lives. And one of the new programs at Ruth's Place is called Give Hope. And I wanna to touch a little bit about that and how that is helping women. So Crystal, tell us a little bit about that uh, program. Give Hope was a street outreach program launched by Volunteers of America um, earlier in 2019-18. Um, so it's a mix between, you know, an arrest diversion program, a street outreach for homeless individuals mixed with the case management that we utilize at Roos Place. Um, you know, in my work at Roos Place, I've known a lot of um, couples, uh, men and women experiencing homelessness together. One particular story, you know, always stuck with me. Um, people who, you know, have to face the choice of separating in order to go into shelters in our community or sticking it out together out there in the wilderness. So um, they inspired me to support Give Hope, to support any effort um, where people are getting out there into these trenches and finding these people who are hiding themselves for one reason or another and giving them the same resources that people receive in shelter, access to the same services that people receive in shelter, and a way to document their experiences of homelessness as you know, um, housing programs in our community. There are special programs for people who are chronically homeless, like a lot of our street homeless population are, but at the time there was nobody documenting that. Um, that makes it easier for them to get the help that they truly deserve for their experiences. Um, so our street outreach team goes out to hotspots in the community, tent cities, um, provides direct case management, client-led case management, um, where we, you know, just take the same steps that they would be receiving from a shelter case manager. And of course, you know, as you both are well aware and our viewers are for sure, you know, there is no Daddy Warbucks out there for the most part. 
So how do you come up with funding for your programs? I mean, is it a combination private? Are you eligible for any kind of state or federal grants? Is it donations for either Ruth's Place volunteers or uh, for Keystone Mission? How do, you, how do you get your funding to make all this work? So at Keystone Mission, uh, we take pride in that we don't take government dollars. Um, all of us is privately funded by um, donors that just have a passion to help the homeless. Um, but what we do is we build a lot of partnerships. Um, and one partnership is right here with myself and uh, Ruth's Place. You know, we feel that we can't do this alone. It's gonna take a community. Um, we have great partnerships when it comes to the government, whether, you know, with Mayor Brown from Wilkes-Barre and, and Mayor Paige Cognetti from uh, Scranton. You know, we build those relationships and whether it's the agencies like Ruth's Place that we build. Uh, and so we're not spending all of our dollars trying to reinvent the wheel. We're, we're saying, okay, what does Ruth's Place need from Keystone Mission to help them out? And we're gonna start providing that. So we get a lot of our stuff mostly from uh, donors. We don't get them from uh, the grants. We don't go for any of those restricted dollars. And that's just because we are a faith-based organization. And um, our board made that decision that that's where they wanna stand. And, and, I, and I love that. And that's one of the reasons why I work here is because we believe it's a community that's gonna take together to end this. And uh, Ruth's Place is a little different. Um, Ruth's Place does have very strong funding partners with our um, Luzerne County, the city of Wilkes-Barre, and also our partners at the United Way are very supportive of our mission. Um, but, you know, running a 24 seven shelter is um, not easy. We rely on donations from private foundations and the community to make ends meet. Um, you know, our budget is very tight as a nonprofit. It always is, and we are definitely you know, scrimping and saving, um, doing the best we can, you know, but we are committed to maintaining our 24 seven shelter. So that is just, it, you know, all that legwork, it takes what it takes, you know, to make sure that the bills are paid and the ladies are taken care of and they're happy and healthy. And, and of course you both can't do it alone. You do have a staff, but do you need volunteers? 100%. Um, and actually, um, in the rescue mission field, which is what Keystone Mission is, we can't do it without volunteers. Um, volunteers are truly the backbone of our organization. Um, and we could always use volunteers. They can always, you know, go onto our websites, make phone calls to us. Um, volunteers are essential, bottom line. Absolutely. It definitely takes a village to get things done, to get things accomplished, to you know, make sure that um, the wheels keep turning. So we are always looking for volunteers as well. We have a volunteer coordinator named Sally who is available to schedule, you know, tours and interviews and all kinds of things like that to see what volunteers can do with us. Um, you know, unfortunately, due to COVID and our, you know, uh, communal facility, depending on what's going on with the cases in our community, we do have to make changes to our volunteer program. But um, it is very vital to our operations and will continue. If I can, very quickly, you know, we're talking about. COVID-19 numbers as we're now in cold weather, which is always a challenge for, mm -hmm. for the homeless population. But if the numbers increase or there have been some predictions of a surge of a surge in COVID, how did that impact your, your both operations? How, I mean, is there concern that you might not be able to handle uh, the need? So um, we're doing Code Blue in Scranton um, this year. And again, it's gonna be at the Weston Fieldhouse. And so that is, that is an excellent question. Um, we are working with the city of Scranton. Um, I, I talked about Mayor Paige Cognetti and, and Mayor, Major, uh, Mayor Brown working hard with us. Um, we are working to figure out how are we gonna make that logistically work. Now I ran COVID in that building before um, locked down with individuals. So we're expecting to see a large surge of individuals coming in, especially with the cold weather. Um, you know, it's very harsh, uh, you know, elements to live in. Uh, to live out there. So we are working as hard as we can to make sure that we keep to that uh, six foot radius, you know, making sure we keep the distance, making sure people keep those masks on. At the same time, we also have to protect our staff and we have to protect um, the volunteers that are there. So there's a lot of logistics behind it and a lot of um, uh, moving puzzle pieces that you got to get together to make it happen. So without a doubt, we're getting prepared for it. Um, but I love to see one here in Luzerne County also um, and move forward with that a uh, code blue and, and follow the same principles that we're following up in Scranton down here in uh, Luzerne County. Yes, that would be wonderful. Um, at Ruth's Place, 
we've come a long way with our COVID preparedness and procedures, and I'm not worried that we are well prepared to handle any increase in need. Um, what I do worry about and what I do lose sleep at night about is the, the barrier that COVID itself presents, that it creates, um, that deters homeless individuals from entering a shelter to begin with. Um, you know, worrying about sleeping and sharing spaces with people is totally understandable. But I do want women um, to know that Ruth's Place is precautious, that we have put every necessary detail in place to keep you safe. And I would rather you, you know, give us a chance and see how it is than risk it out there in the cold. Um, it always makes me, you know, it makes my heart hurt in the winter every time because, you know, I've grown up in Northeastern Pennsylvania and um, been stuck outside in the snow and it, it's no joke. And I don't want to see anyone lose their life. Well, you know, Justin and Crystal, we want to thank you both, you know, for being with us today. We do want to remind everyone that information on today's show is on pahomepage.com or under the Newsmakers link. And we have your websites linked up to us. If someone's looking to give gift cards and mon monetary donations, clothing, they always accept. Um, so for both of you, they say angels walk among us. And I think we have two here today who are out there fighting the good fight for people who are in need. Um, Justin and Crystal, thank you both for joining us today. Thank you very much. And thanks for the good work, the great work you guys do uh, in the community. Thank you. For Andy Mahalshik and everyone behind the scenes, I'm Jane Ambugda. We want to thank you for making Newsmakers part of your day. And we'll talk again next time.